Hey guys, this is Hero, and today I'm going to discuss the difference between spiritual desires and distractions, okay? So, just a, a little quick um, note at the beginning. We tend to always note or kind of coin things as either good or bad. However, that's usually abstract and not always the absolute truth, right? So, for example, not all things that are bad are bad like in all aspect of things. For, and also, for example, not all things that are good are good in all aspect of things as well, okay? So just a quick note, just like, I don't know if you guys have seen the picture of like the yin and yang. In every bad, there's always a little bit of good, and every good, there's always a little bit of bad, okay? And that's kind of like a key thing to understand for, for anything in this life, okay? Now, going back to spiritual uh, desires versus distractions. So when our soul like, takes birth, it basically has certain desires that it wants or needs to fulfill, okay? And the extent to that fulfillment is based on your karma, okay? Um, now, these desires are not bad, okay? You literally took this birth to fulfill certain desires, okay? Now, how society or how, you know, certain people label and judge those desires, that's almost irrelevant. However, it's important for you to fulfill those desires. However, you don't want to get attached to how those desires are getting fulfilled, okay? And that's kind of where the distraction part comes in. I'm going to tell you in a second. So how to, first of all, how to become aware of your desires at a soul level is all, in my opinion, you got to basically uh, meditate and or, or do some kind of grounding and to gain that higher awareness so you can connect more with that higher level of consciousness, okay? Because your ego can always trick you into what it what it wants you to think its desires are, and most of the time they're just distractions, okay? For example, you can have the desire to ha drive like a very nice car. However, once you get that, your ego will try to distract you with, you know, more and more like kind of specifics of how you, you like for example, let's just say you get like a, like a nice BMW, okay? And then, um, you know, like like your ego, like that was your sole desire, okay? Just to, like like just being able to drive a nice car. And then once you kind of fulfill that, your ego might try to tempt you and be like, hey, look, you know, this is not good enough. Let me let me go out and get a Lamborghini, okay? And then once that happens, then maybe like a McLaren, Ferrari. You guys get the point, right? Because sometimes you need to, you or you have to fulfill that sole desire so that you learn a certain lesson, right? So for example, let's just say, it's in your karma to have a nice car and like your karma was basically a BMW for this night for this lifetime, right? Like a nice BMW, okay? Like an M5 or something like that. Now, when you when you get that, this is just a hypothetical, right? Based on, I don't know who, like too many specifics about some of your guys' lives, but when you get that, you could learn after that fulfillment of desire. One, you could get that enjoyment that like your soul was looking for and two, there's certain lessons that could have happened that like are unexplained by the mind that um, that basically got fulfilled. Like for example, let's just say um, be, because of that nice car, like you were able to do certain things, right? That be, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the butterfly effect, but basically any time that something happens in our life, it, it creates like a whole host of like other compounded effects. We mostly just think about the direct effect, right? But there's a whole host of other compounding effects that happen that we might not be aware of, okay? So first of all, yeah, let's just say we got a BMW back to that example. So first, your soul got that desire to ha feel what it's like to drive a nice car, right? That's why it took birth, to experience some of these desires. Two, there could have been other compounding actions um, in your karma that happened because you had that car and then three at a soul level You could learn to detach from material stuff. This is just a hypothetical like I said because you got that nice car You know that hey, you know what you you get a little bit closer to the truth and you realize that hey, you know what driving a nice car like st th Having a state of mind of happiness doesn't depend isn't dependent on anything external. Okay, so Having a nice car, yeah, you know, on the ego level, it's, it's it, it can be very temporary, uh, temporarily satisfying. But however, that that um, that true state of mind of happiness or that true long term fulfillment is not going to come for this. So that's maybe possibly another lesson you could have learned. Now, once you do that at a soul level, you're kind of done. Okay. However, your ego is always going to try to trick you and be like, no, no, we need more, we need more, we need more. Okay. That's an example of this. So. And like I said, how you be how you be aware of kind of like where that desire level stops, that's 
you like I said, you got to just increase your awareness and you'll kind of know. OK, uh, it, it's hard to explain like on a rational level, but rationally, all I can tell you to do is um, meditate more and gain that awareness. And then spiritually, you'll begin to be uh, have stronger awareness of where the distinction is between your desires and your distractions. OK, one other thing could be, let's just say you want like a happy um like married life or something like this, right? Or like a happy relationship or something like this. Uh, like let's just say with somebody good looking, okay? So based on your karma, you'll get that to whatever whatever extent your karma is in, you'll get that. Now, what could happen is once you get whatever is in your karma, your ego could try to always convince you to get more, right? Like it's always gonna have, especially in relationships and stuff like that, you're always gonna have that mindset after a little while, after that ego hide dies down, that you, the grass is greener on the other side, okay? So, like I said, you, in order to distinguish between where that desire stops, that genuine soul desire stops, and it moving into that ego trick, ego distraction, that's going to be dependent on, um, you know, your karma. And the only way you're going to realize that is um, by how aware you are, right? Now, I'll give you an example of some, something with like a not a good karma, right? There's like a famous story. Let's just say there's this one guy. Um... Let's say that someone has a desire to be around a lot of attractive people um, like with the opposite sex, right? Like, let's just say like you have, you, have two, you have two genuine desires, one to be around a lot of money and two to be around a lot of people of the opposite sex, right? But let's just say like, if your karma is good, you'll get it like in that manner, okay? Like you'll have like in your next lifetime, for example, you can have plenty of good relationships, plenty of money flowing your way that that that's all yours, okay? Or that you know, you can enjoy properly. Now, if you don't have good karma, I'll explain to you what that looks like, okay? So, let's just say you, you wanted to be around a lot of money and you wanted to be around a lot of people the opposite sex, right? Let's just say in the next life I'm also born as a male. Okay? Now, what could happen is if I have bad karma, let's just say I could work I could be a worker at a fancy hotel that like throws like that's like in charge of like a lot of like beauty events. Okay, so you get what's happening, right? I'm I'm working at the hotel. I, I'm surrounded by a lot of money, and I'm surrounded by a lot of good-looking people of the opposite sex. However, it's not in my karma that like all of that is mine. Okay, I'm around it. My soul had that desire to kind of. That, that like from an energetic, you know, like a law of attraction level, I, I, I maintain those things in this life. However, because of my karma, I wasn't able to, you know, get them kind of the exact way that, you know, you would think of as far as like, you know, enjoying that money or, you know, being in like, you know, fruitful relationships with the people of the opposite sex. Okay. Stuff like that. So that's kind of an example of good versus bad karma. Okay. So in this example, the person's car, um, you know, desire still get, still got fulfilled. It, it's still like, you still got what you wanted and you could still learn at a soul level. Hey, you know, like money and good looks and stuff, you know, you might notice that People with all this stuff, you know, genuinely might not be the happiest inside. Okay, you can still learn all that at a soul level. But however, for this person, the karma wasn't there to kind of enjoy that at the level that, you know, you might perceive that if you had that desire, that this would be the extent that you can, you know, enjoy these kind of things, right? Now, however, your ego is also going to, oh, in that situation, let's just say I'm the worker in the next life at the hotel, um, the ego is always still going to try to trick you okay into um wanting more and more so like i said no matter whether i'm i'm just a worker i don't have any of the money or any of the or any of those you know good looking relationships or anything like that i'm still gonna want more but i can still always learn the lesson okay like that next slide let's say my karma is good and i have all that yeah i'm still gonna want more and i can still learn the lesson that's the key okay no matter where you are, no matter how good or bad your karma is, quote unquote, good and bad, there's still an opportunity for everything in your life to learn the lessons and your ego is still going to always trick, want to trick you to want more. Okay. And so, yeah, that's that. That's basically the lesson here um, from the desires, from whatever you're able to maintain based off of your karma, you're you're going to want to learn as much as possible from that as well as enjoy genuinely okay at a soul level and you're always going to want to understand that the ego is always going to try want to try to trick you into being at that lower state and always desiring more okay 
once you analyze those two, you'll 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 notice everything that happens in your life. You'll you'll notice kind of that you're just a lot more accepting of what happens. Now, there could be an example, right? Like what happens if it's in my karma to kind of aspire after more, chase it and get it. Like what happens like, for example, some people are born rich, some people have to work very hard to get rich, right? What happens if it's in my karma to get to get rich like on my own, right? I can't just sit back and do nothing. Like I have to kind of chase after and aspire. Well, that you'll notice that as a soul desire also. Okay, like you'll and it will be in your karma, or else it won't happen. But you'll notice that as a soul desire also, versus like someone who doesn't really have that as like a soul desire. Like they, but the ego just tells them that hey, you know, you're not valued unless you have all this. Um, you'll notice the difference between the two. Like I said, if you just meditate and gain higher awareness, okay, you'll recognize whether you kind of genuinely have that desire to make more money and you know gain more status and stuff like that, or whether it's just the ego kind of tricking you and telling you and try to convincing you, however negatively it can. Okay, so that's it for this video between um, distractions and desires. Um, hope you guys took something from this, and if you have any questions, let me know. And until next time, thank you, and talk to you guys later. Thanks.